Bucks Nipplegate, the FCC sued CBS for the live incident in a $550,000 lawsuit, citing indecent exposure for their cause. Janet Jackson was really close with the ringer for her part in the whole scandal. As a result, she was uninvited to the Grammy Awards that year, and her songs were blacklisted from the radio. Even the next few albums that she released following the incident was met with negative reviews because of the scandal. If this were to happen now, I doubt she would have been met with such severe backlash. You, it was later discovered that this whole incident happened because the two performers had added a costume reveal into their performance at the last minute, and though it was rehearsed, the stunt failed at the last minute, resulting in Janet's exposure. It was all just an accident that ended up destroying someone's career. In at number three, Steven Seagal. Back in 1991, Steven Seagal wasn't chomping on carrots and using too much just for men in his beard. He was a big action star. So needless to say, most people were excited to see him hosting Saturday Night Live. Unfortunately, the cast found him extremely difficult to work with. Ron McDonald even said that he told them he didn't want to be in any of the sketches, which is typically something that every host just does. He did eventually oblige their request, but the cast was so fed up with him that they almost did the show with no host at all. Seagal was then banned by Laura Michaels immediately after her being, as he so eloquently put it, the worst host ever. In fact, in 2014, Michaels told New York Magazine that when Nicolas Cage was hosting... Hi. Hey, mama, I just do, do not want to do that drag quest. He is, he's, you know, not that strong yet. Surrounded Millie Vanilli was one of music's biggest scandals, and it revealed that they were never really a real group and that everything was fake. This stage act was put together by German record producer Frank Farian as he attempted to create the next biggest music stars. It worked in theory, but they fell from grace as quickly as they rose. He had a vision to be able to release amazing music, but he needed the perfect people to sell it, and that's where Morgan and Politis came into play. These two dancers were hired to be the bright, shining faces of Millie Vanilli, and though it was a musical act, they never had to sing. In fact, they lip sync their entire career. Their act was a hit, and it worked for a while, even earning themselves a Grammy for their song, Girl You Know It's True, but like all good things, they can never last. Millie Vanilli conquered the Billboard charts, they were asked to tour and perform live, but things started to get difficult for them since this act never really sang, and playing pretend on stage just wasn't cutting it. Eventually, they were caught in the act, so to speak, as their track suddenly stopped working during the last how dare you kiss me without warning like that? And while your girlfriend, my cousin, is back in class waiting on you. I shrieked indignantly. He put my performance, revealing that they were faking it all along. This took a big toll on Morgan and Politis, especially on their mental health, driving Politis to take his own life. And finally, number one, Talia Hills. How mean is to me? Well, for former X Factor New Zealand judge Talia Hills, she was to me. After casting some harsh judgment on an X Factor contestant, Natalia was dubbed a bully and saw her career go down the tubes as a result. On the show's second season, contestant Joe Irvin performed a rendition of My oh, Boys Cry Me River, and when he finished his performance, that is what all hell broke loose. Natalia criticized his performance harshly, saying that he was a copycat of her husband, saying that he made her feel disgusted and sick. She also said, quote, as an artist who respects creative integrity and intellectual property, I'm disgusted at how much you have copied from my husband. From the hair to the suit, do you not have any value or respect for originality? You are a laughing stock. It's cheesy. It's disgusting. I personally found it absolutely artistically atrocious, end quote. A lot of people were shocked at how harsh her criticisms were, and so many people were appalled by Natalia's behavior that a petition was made to have her and another judge who was also so a little too harsh for food from the show. The petition worked, and they were both booted midway through the season. Following this incident, Natalia was shunned and even went as far as changing her name to deflect some of the scrutiny that she was facing. Her career was truly over after this moment. Starting off at number 10, we have Kanye West. So starting at number 10, we have one that you should all know if you love this and some good old teeth, and that is Kanye West's Grammy incident. In one of the most famous and unexpected outbursts of all time, Kanye was interrupted Taylor Swift's acceptance speech at the MTV EMAs in 2009. I'm really happy for you. I'm let you finish. But Beyonce had one of the best videos of all time. While Taylor Swift was on stage accepting her award for best female music video, Kanye famously yelled, well, Taylor, I'm really happy for you, I'm gonna let you finish, but Beyonce had one of the best videos of all time, which was a complete shock to everyone, and was embarrassing as hell for pretty much 
did Neil Patrick Harris win a Tony for? I won a Tony for playing Hedwig in the revival on Broadway of Hedwig and the Angry 